the world is flat, and this is just one clue. So do some of your own research and ask questions. Please feel free to email me at msergeant23 at comcast.net or 303-494-6631. And that, everybody, is Mr. Mark Sargent. Thank you so much for joining us on the Wide Awake Show, Mark. It's great to see you again, isn't it, Rich and Tim? Yeah. yeah nice Wait, to see you. what? This this isn't Good Morning Britain? What the hell? No, I don't no, do. dude, sorry. Not, not today, mate. Thank no, you, this is, this is uh, Rise and Shine. It's the Wide Awake Club. Yeah. <laughs> I have not listened to the empty theater in probably three years at least. Oh, really? Yep. So thank you for that. Uh, and there's only a couple things I really would have changed. Uh, one, I would have probably hesitated when putting my phone number at the end of it, which is still my real phone number. You can call that <laughs> number and it'll ring right now. That, that, by the way, was one of the few clues I think were actually audibly said my own phone number. No, it's okay that you put it out there. It's just that that um, it, it was one because I put it out there deliberately because I wanted people to call me. It's like, yeah, shoot this thing down. Hammer it, yeah. hammer it away. I dare you. Well, because yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know and, what in all this time i didn't know that that was like i thought that was just like one of those numbers where you're like oh yeah go on, oh no no on. there are people yeah. to this day when they hear it they wow. immediately pick up the phone without even going to the next clue and just start dialing and yeah. they'll, they'll and i and i don't even pick it up on the first mess the first time they call because they'll call and they'll go like holy smoke there's voicemail and then they'll hang up and then most of them won't call back again but the rest yeah. will and they'll be like yeah so i got a couple questions about the flat earth and stuff uh, it's like oh god so, i love it we might absolutely. get a few more <laughs> <laughs> probably gonna get a few more now probably um, again thank you so much for joining us I, I, I know that we've done some bits and pieces in the past but in light of the great awakening we've had over the last few years a massive influx of people who mark have been given the time to discern some fact from fiction yeah. And I'm really happy to say that some people have sat down long enough to go into the subject of whether they're on what they've been taught they're on by the ministries of education in each right. retrospective country. I'm yeah. saying it like this because there is some people that are going to be watching this that are going to go, oh, yeah, yeah. Don't get about the I'm not <laughs> listening to this. And I really need people, I'm, I'm, I'm begging them, if they are this long in the tooth and they are still with us, Please understand that this is a socially acceptable conversation and we're going to prove that to you. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah. And, and by the way, that the clues, that particular clue that was made uh, turned for anyone who you just said may just be getting into this now. That clue just turned seven years old. Seven years. Remember 2015? <laughs> no, God. Game of Thrones was a, was a thing. Time. The what? A different age. It, <laughs> it was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, com computer printers typed in pencil. No, it was it was it was amazing though. So yeah, seven years ago, and since then, so so much has happened since then. Even the Netflix documentary ran out its entire contract on Netflix and just left ne Netflix after three years. Um, in fact, in fact, I was just reading. You probably you guys probably saw me reading in the background. I just got this today, sent by one of my listeners. The first anti flat Earth book just came out. Uh, I don't know if you could see it very well. Can you see that? Yeah, the green screen completely the green screen's up. interfering a little bit. All right, how about there? So it's called yeah, Off the Edge. Right. Yeah. If I put it in front of me. There we go. Off the Edge. And uh, it's written by Kelly Weil. And she went to our conferences in Dallas and Denver. And she wrote a book on it. And it's called Off the Edge. And I've been thumbing through it. And it is. she is an absolute blue team. Hates God. Hates Republicans. Hates wow. Flat Earth. Oh, yeah. It's oh. completely, you know, in fact, I, I watched an interview with her. She was on Skeptic Magazine yesterday. And and I was as I was listening to them for like 90 minutes, I realized it's like she could just work for them. She she works for the Daily Beast. And I only knew this book came out because Rolling Stone Magazine did an article on it. I'm sure she's got friends at Rolling Stone. It's like, oh, man. So David Weiss wants to attack this book so badly. And I don't blame him at the moment because I'm already five chapters in and it is not flattering at all. Wow. Yeah, wow. but, but, but that's the point is like, like we've done so much. We've even got this thing might even make the New York Times bestseller, right? That's how long we've been doing this. 
You've made a great point. If that if that clip that we've just shown is seven years old, right? Um, which I, I want to bring you in at this point with what you've just seen in that clip from Mark and hearing what Mark's saying there, like seven years, seven I years, mean, that clip's been out there. Seven years, man. So eight years ago, um, in August in two thousand and thirteen, that's when I wandered down the first rabbit hole um, and first started looking at the. I was watching Eric Dubay. Um, I was watching ODD TV. Yourself, yep. Mark, um, and th there weren't yeah there weren't that many channels around, were there? But um, that's who I was watching. It took me three years to come to terms with it and to uh, to actually admit it to to not only myself but to everybody else. Yeah. Because but that was because of um, personal experience being able to observe um islands that should be hidden by curvature and they're not so you know i, I could I, I could make it my own observation do my own mathematics my own mathematical calculation of what the curvature should be how much of the island i should see and from that 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 said to me right okay they're they're not talking it's not a load of rubbish. Like you, you watch the, you watch these videos. When I, back in 2013, when I was watching these videos, I'd be watch, sitting there watching them, not being able to dispute anything that was being said at all, and sitting at the end of the video, sitting there and going, "Nah, nah, 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 it can't be, man." Nah, for three yeah. years doing that until I, until I actually made an observa the observations myself, and um. Yeah, seven years. It's gone so quick, isn't it? <laughs> well, you're you're stubborn if it took you three years. You're one of the longest people I've ever heard. That was to admit it to other people, to oh, actually okay. come out okay. and say to people. And, and, you know, because I didn't have a YouTube channel. I oh. didn't have um, – oh, no, I did, but I wasn't using it for this sort of thing. That's I didn't even think about using it for this sort of thing. So when I when I first started to really think about it, all I had was conversations that I could have with people and the people that I was talking to were not receptive to it at right. all. So, um, yeah, it, that's probably the only reason why it took three years. Yeah. And, and why, why would they be receptive? Again, I've, I've said this now you know, since the beginning, which is if you don't laugh at this in the first 20 minutes after hearing it, there's probably <laughs> something wrong with you because <laughs> you, you, you should be able I mean, because we are so conditioned, you know the story. We've been so conditioned. It's the only thing we debunk to children. Yeah. I mean, we don't tell children about 9-11 or JFK or any of the other wonderful American conspiracies. We put a globe in the classroom and say, oh, yeah, it used to be flat. Not anymore. Here's this little blue spinning toy. And then they leave it in the classroom for 12 years. And yeah. that's that's usually all it takes for most people to get that knee-jerk reaction of. I mean, I had a friend of mine, a guy that I went to high school, you know, all of school with. And when we went to a class reunion and I told him what I was into, he goes home and he leaves me a message. And I, I can, can I swear on, on this channel? Probably, right? Yeah. He, he says, uh, he, <laughs> yes, he he, all he did was he called up and he goes, bullshit. <laughs> and he hangs up the phone. And I know that he had a few drinks in him when he said it, but the fact that he would have that knee jerk reaction. I mean, I've had cousins that send me scathing emails. You know, people that have never said a bad thing about me in my life. And and one more thing, I was doing a, an interview uh, with, um, I think, New Zealand Today. And the guy was working me over in the hot sun for like 40 minutes, just trying to get a rise out of me, just working me, working me. And he was in the shade, bastard. And he goes, and he goes, he stops. He, he goes, just cut, 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 cut. He goes, look, man, I'm trying to get something here. I'm trying to get you to lose it. He goes, you're not going to lose it, are you? I go, no, why would I? I go, I go, five years ago, I used to be you. I go, why, why? I go, if I was to pop off and start yelling at you, I'd be a hypocrite. So yeah, yeah. So yeah, your your journey, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's a little atypical, but I love it. So it's, I want to chime in at this point, Rich and Mark yeah. and Jimmy, right? Yeah. Um, where Rich is on his pursuit of truth of this, um, I want your answer for this as well, Mark. I want you to shoot first. For those people that are watching, that are still kind of rolling their eyes and have the mentality of, you know what, this, even if it was the truth, even if we weren't living on what we were taught, we were living, what, what, what is the relevance? What, why is it so important? For the, what is the point? Like, why have I got to spend any time at all 
looking at this. There's right. all this stuff with the COVID. There's all this stuff with Ukraine. You know, my job, my life, the things I need in life. Why do I need to bother? I've got religion, haven't I? Does it really matter? Does it really matter? Now, I know I could say this in my words. We all know on the panel, I've, I've yep. done my time. I, yep. It's not about what I'm saying right now. I yep. want to know what you're all saying. So, Mark, I want you to shoot first and then Rich after you. Uh, uh yeah. First, uh, on a little side note on the Ukraine thing, this hat was actually given to me by Gorbachev himself. When it comes to the the why, you know, why why does it matter? Uh, it would the the, the question before that should be, who, why would you bother even hiding it? Why would you why would you keep this a secret? And it's mostly, you know, it's like, what, what do they have to gain? And wouldn't it be too big a conspiracy to be too many people? It's like, no, very, very few people at the highest level would have to be able to keep this a secret. It's so big that it's it's people don't even see it. You can't see the forest for the trees. But as far as why would the power, let's call them the elite, right? Why would the elite hide this? Um, mostly because they don't want to lose control. Not that they're gaining much from it, but they don't want to lose it because even they didn't figure it out completely until about 1960. And if you don't know exactly what the world is by 1960, well, civilization's already been built. The, the foundation, the concrete's already been hardened. So at that point, you potentially could lose everything. Um, and by that, I mean the, the big three things, academics, um, all universities that have to empty libraries out, I mean, and, and have to start over from scratch in just about every discipline you can think of. Uh, economics, world markets would have to suspend completely in all countries for, for months because you don't know what it means you know, the implications. Uh, but the big one is the the five major religious houses of this world, um, Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, and Christianity. You're giving them all leverage against the foundations of science simultaneously, and you're asking them to show restraint. And so why does it matter <sighs> to you? Okay. From a daily standpoint, you'd be like, well, I still got to get up in the morning and my my wife doesn't listen to me and my kids are horrible and my job sucks and it's not going to change any of that. It's like, yeah, it will, though, at the second you believe it. You just don't think it's going to matter now because you don't believe it. But once you believe it, it changes everything about you. It gives it gives purpose. It gives meaning, meaning you are not just this tiny little rock flying through space in an impossible universe. And you're an accident, a, a side effect of the Big Bang Theory. You are part. It's way more intimate. And you are here for a reason. If it was built, if it was created, if there is structure to it, which can be measured, then it was built for a reason. And you are here for a reason. You have purpose. Now, does that again, does that change your daily life? In some ways, actually, it will because it changes the tint. It changes the the color palette of the whole thing. You, I mean, I've had so many people come to me and said, "Yeah, yeah, I, I feel like now I have much more of a connection to the world I live in. Before, I just felt lost, lost in space. No play on the television series, but true. Anyway, there you go. Ah, oh, thank you for that, Mark. I appreciate that because, as I said, I feel there's going to be viewers watching that are going to say that. Well, what's the what's the, the even if it was. Uh, why would I bother looking into it? Rich, what about you? Why? Why 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 is um, why, why have I just want to say I just want to say firstly, great question. Secondly, great answer, Mark. Um I, I agree like with everything that you said. And I'd say that basically um <laughs> it's not like all right, why why is it important? Why is it important what shape the earth is? It's not. It's not important. That's not important. It, whether the Earth is a globe or whether it's flat makes absolutely no freaking difference whatsoever to your day to day life, how you live your life, how you be, how you behave or react. But the fact that they've lied about it, you have to ask, well, why would they lie about it? So what does the lie do? The lie makes every one of us feel very small, insignificant, we don't matter, we're, we're tiny little specks of flesh on the back of a rock that's spinning a thousand miles an hour, traveling however many hundreds of thousands of miles an hour through the galaxy, and you know, and it's all because of this big bang. We all we all came from an accident. We crawled out of the sludge. We evolved from monkeys. And there's probably millions of other aliens out there that are way more powerful and way more intelligent and close. You know, all, all of that. So it makes you feel absolutely powerless. And that 
nothing that happens has any meaning whatsoever. Your life is meaningless. You are meaningless. Everything that you do is essentially meaningless. The reality of it is that the, well, what I believe and what, what we believe the reality of it is, is that this realm is, all, it might not be all there is, but certainly it's, it's a great big center of our experience. It's the center of our experience. And um, it was created for us to have this experience. And we were created to have this experience within this realm. Every single one of us is there, there's an intent there was an intention behind this creation so you the re why have they lied to us to remove power to take to, to, so that they can have all the power and we have none we were taught what well, i was always taught when i was young and it's in all the all the films and everything is knowledge is power knowledge is power how is knowledge power how does knowledge make you powerful well if you know something that nobody else knows and it's fundamental to your existence and, and what you're able to do within it, then you have power, don't you? So that's exactly what they've done. They've removed the knowledge. They've removed the, basically they've taken away this. This is a game. We're playing a game and they've taken away the rule book. They're holding onto the rule book. They know what all the rules are and that um, we're, we're meant to play along to the rules that they're telling us. They're, they're not the rules. It's the, it's the rules to their game. But the, this game that we're playing, this is our game. This is our realm. This was created for us. And the sooner people realize that, the, and, you know, recognize it, they say truth sets you free, and it does. Uh, and maybe all of us that know the truth now or feel we know the truth, we might, it might seem like we're powerless and we're not, bit, we're not able to affect any, any change or anything like that. But the thing is, even though nothing's changed, I feel so much more powerful because at least I know what's going on or I have a better idea of what's going on. Well I love that. I love that. Well said. I can I agree with you 100% on absolutely everything you've said there, Rich. Um, wonderfully put as well. Um, Jim, with what yeah. you've done so far, you've looked into it a bit. Like what, yeah. Already, from your point of view, why would you say to our viewers, no, this is a subject that you, sh you should take, say, take seriously. You should look into it. Why? Well, it's hard to, certain things is hard to prove wrong, isn't it? That's the, that's that's the it. thing. And even when I was a kid, I was saying it to you a lot earlier, I, I thought, how are we going at that speed? I, you, you just feel like you're not moving. It's, all, it's, mm -hmm. it's very hard. When you actually sit and think about some of the things that come up in certain videos you can watch and stuff, yeah. it's hard to, it is hard to prove it wrong. And I struggle, like now, there's a lot of truthers that call it a planet or whatever. I struggle to call it a planet now. And I would not call it you a planet. You see why I used to get yeah. so triggered on it now, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't definitely. It just gripes you after a yeah. while. The word globe, planet, globe, planet, yeah. planet, globe, yeah. globe, planet, hemisphere. Sphere, sphere, sphere. I'll yeah. just hear the ball aspect of it all. Yeah. And um, round. And I, and I round. agree with what Rich said as well about it do, feeling in the significance. So, like a big rock could come and hit you or something, you know what I mean? Yeah. Feeling and, like I, that. and I don't understand how they can, like, how anything, if there's no gravity, how does stuff fall in like a meteorite or whatever? You know what I mean? How does it fall in if there's no, like, sort of gravity for it to come in? You know what I mean? That's but, it. It's, uh, a, it's, there's a, it's loads, just a, an, there's loads a simultaneous of questions you can ask pack yourself. of lies on one or another, one or another. Yeah. And the stars was the main, like, even like, when I always used to look at the stars and think, why aren't they, like, moving on that? And, like, why are they so still? And you can just tell everything's still if you really think yourself. See? And I'm not claiming any yeah. sort of shapes or anything. I just know from my own pers perspective. Independent thought, man. You use yeah. your own independent critical yeah. thinking to to assess the situation and it doesn't weigh up does it, it it's yeah. like no oh, you're and telling me i'm it, really. but, yeah. it did seem crazy but even when you look at the model you're taught like a video of it it's all fake you even when you're a kid you look at it and you think why is it all cartoons and all fake and everything else but even when you look at it, it look, just looks crazy doesn't it that you're even just standing there and you're not flying around everything mm -hmm. Yeah, there's loads of arguments to go with it, like like uh, untold. But my, a lot of most of them, I would agree with more that points yeah. towards points towards it anyway. Yeah, and the fact that NASA just lies constantly about everything and 
So from from us. from up from all of us, without me even putting my two cents worth in, I'm hoping you, the viewers, have heard a few things here so far that have got you thinking to yourself, do you know what? I really should maybe spend if you've got an hour or an half or an hour or so to watch a movie, you've probably got 90 minutes free at some point to look into this topic. Now mm. I want to switch lanes a little bit because for those of you that are watching, um, I want you to kind of get involved here and put your comments in the comment section um, for what it would take for you to believe that you were on a spinning ball. And if you would just indulge me for a small moment, I have a clip that I'm going to play us all um, from the guy himself that sat there in front of us just now. It's a couple of minutes, Mark, if you'd indulge us. Um, and then I'm going to jump back to us on the panel. Uh, so if you just bear with me a second, I'm going to share this and then I'm going to do that. And if it's okay with all of you, Mark, uh, you're going to have to sit here and listen to yourself for a hot second. But I really do feel that this is very relevant for the subject that we are talking about and at, at where we're at with this subject. Because for those that are watching, you're probably thinking that if this is so far out of the box of what you've heard before um, and you really haven't taken this subject seriously, we're going to give you a plethora of reasons for what people would need to believe that they're on a globe. So if you just bear with me a second, I'm going to put this full screen and I shall play. I would believe in a globe if there were real photographs. I would believe in a globe if someone measured the curve. I would believe in a globe if someone showed me how water can curve and stick to a ball, I would believe in a globe if the constellations changed. I would believe in a globe if the stars didn't perfectly circle above us. I would believe in a globe if satellites didn't live in an area that gets above 2,000 degrees. I would believe in a globe, if not for sundials, astrolabes, and gyroscopes. I would believe in a globe if the Coriolis effect actually was used by anyone on the ground. I would believe in a globe if Antarctica could be freely explored. I would believe in a globe if NASA could explain how they safely traveled to the moon. I would believe in a globe if someone could show how the atmosphere just fades into the vacuum of space. I would believe in a globe if the sun and moon weren't the same size relative to us. I would believe in a globe if moonlight was warmer than moonshade. I would believe in a globe if gravity could be explained. All that being said, why do you believe in a globe? In full transparency, I did not write most of that. Just so you know. Uh, I, I can't remember exactly who sent it to me. Sorry to whoever it was because it's like, ah, oh, crap. I got... I mean, there's 1,400 videos on my channel. I'm not going to memorize everything that I ever did on every one of them. Um, but that was amended. When, when, when I'm interviewed, I usually only give two answers because I want to keep it short. I don't want to get going all this stuff. So when people say, what would it take to get you to renounce Flat Earth forever? And you guys probably already know these. Um, the first one is, yeah, show me any <clears throat> camera footage that's put on the top of any rocket that's pointing down towards the Earth that when it leaves orbit, you know, the Earth forms into this wonderful globe, which has never happened in the history of space travel, which is statistically impossible. You know, all nations, it's, it does not exist. That footage is not out there, and we'd love to analyze it if anyone wants to do it. And the last one that should have done it was Elon Musk when he put the, the, the convertible in space. A whole other story for another time. But the other thing, because somebody said, well, you got to come up with something that's, that you can do down here, which was the vacuum chamber test. 
which is the, the challenge I put out there for years. No university ever contacted me. No one even bothered, which was the, the spacesuits from the Americans from the 60s all the way through today, uh, they all defy thermodynamics, meaning, you know, when they're put in a vacuum chamber, they don't puff up for, for mm. some apparent reason. And the biggest vacuum chamber of all should be space and or the moon. And they should they should just turn into parade floats and the guy should tip over and they should explode and they should die. And so my challenge was, I go, well, we can make, we have vacuum chambers here, lots of them in uni different universities. Put me in, uh, loan me a spacesuit, you know, just for a day, put me in one of these chambers and pull the switch. Tell, tell me what happens. Or make it even easier, tell me what magical thing is in the backpacks of these spacesuits that stops the vacuum of space. I go, oxygen, heating, cooling, CO2 scrubbers, that's easy. That that's 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 mechanical. But tell me tell me what stops the vacuum of space, and no one no one even tried. No, and I talked to a lot of different people, big groups, small <laughs> groups, university people. No one even attempted to do such a thing. Uh, and I I even got to the point where I you know because I didn't want to go in by myself because I figured well they just pull the switch and it's like oh something happened to Mark that's ah, a tragedy. But but now but so. Um, so I, I said, maybe someone else should go in with me. But after a while, I, I just to up the ante, I said, no, I'll go in by myself. Absolutely. Let's do it. And you would have thought like Mythbusters or Brian Cox out in your neck of the woods would have done it. But no. So anyway, there you go. Not yet. Not yet. No, you know what? As I said, you've covered that amazingly. And for our viewers at home, I want you to get involved there as well. For those of you that know you're not on a spinning ball, um, please put your reasons for what it would take you to believe in a most boat. most people would want to be sent to space but you got to remember that they can trick you pretty quickly when it comes to that there was a show oh. out in in uk called um oh was it spaced out or space cadets um where they they it was a reality show where they put took some of your people and they put them through a fake space program do you don't remember this? This was like five years ago. But you should look mm -hmm. it up. Uh, no. I, I will look it up when someone else starts talking. Which okay. one? And so what they did was that the finale of the series was they put they, them in a simulator with no windows. And the whole catch was there were so there were most of it were reality people, you know, just just people off the street that were trying to, but there were two two crisis actors that were totally playing the part. And they pretended it's like, oh, yeah, we're going to go up to the space station, you know, the fake launch, the thing shaking around. And they can, as long as there's no windows, they can fake a lot of stuff really well. In fact, mm -hmm. even with windows, they could probably fake things pretty well, you know. So mm -hmm. people said, oh, if they put you in a rocket, would you, you know, would you, would you go and would you renounce it? And I go, okay, first, they're never going to put me in a rocket ever, ever, ever. And even if they did, they put a disclosure agreement in front of me that would say, oh, yeah, by the way, you can't talk about this. And then I'd refuse. Then it's like, wow, well, Mark refused our conditions. Well, it'd be horrible. Anyway, sorry, yeah. I ramble. No, I, not I at all. I've seen now some of them have ended. I don't fancy that. <laughs> That's exactly well, it. All, uh, of it. all of them. We would need witnesses that were on our team, especially that. Rich, what's your take on this? What would it take for you to believe? There are, there, there are, two, right. So there, there's all these arguments with flat earth and i've always said right from the very beginning that uh, you only need one there's only one thing that needs to be proven to to prove if this earth is either a globe or it's not or if it's either a globe or it's flat and that's curvature and that's something that we can demonstrate here on earth because of where you know because of the vantage points that we can view from so if you could, you know, if I could stood, stand on a mountain or, or if, if they could just take some, take a camera up on an aeroplane uh, that with a, with, you know, with a, a, a true lens, not, not a wide angle lens or a, or a fisheye lens. So you can actually see the curvature because based on the model that they've given us, with a circumference of 25,000, um, approximately 25,000 miles, that, that's, it, it's right there, that the parameters are there. The globe, it, they say it's a globe, they depict it as a globe and they give the parameters. So that, that should be demonstrated. We should be able to see it. And until I can see it, I'm not gonna believe it. And we're never ever gonna be able to see it. It doesn't matter how high you send the camera up, 
the, the horizon's still flat. And if this globe was the globe that they say it is, it would be it you'd be able to see it. It would be visible. You know, there's a um and that's that's great. Um there is a video that I recommend to people um of Neil deGrasse Tyson when he was in front of that audience when he was chastising the Red Bull jump from Oh, and, and he said it's flat. Yeah. yeah. And if yeah. he was if, and, if someone yeah, could way, send the, me a link, I'll happily play it if someone could send me a link. Oh, the the uh, yeah, I'll send uh, I'll send you the link. I, I sampled it in the song that I wrote, but yeah. But but what he was doing was he was making fun of the Red Bull jump because he thought it was scientifically dishonest. And what he was saying was, is that at 130,000 feet, when they were doing the Red Bull jump, there's, there shouldn't be, you know, you won't be able to see the curve at all, which is fascinating to me. And I send this video to so many people and I will send you the link to this in just a second, because it's very, very short, which is um, because I've had thousands, thousands of people come to me and say, oh yeah, have you ever been in an airplane, you idiot? Mm. It's because they, they're convinced they see the, the curvature from an airplane window. Mm. And I say, okay. Take this little video and I plink it at him and I say, okay, so what happened here? Is, is Neil deGrasse Tyson the world's most famous scientist? Is he wrong? What what happened? And I've even had people, I've I've gotten arguments with physics students, and I'm sure some of you guys have too, where there's like, well, Neil Tyson and Brian, you know, he doesn't represent us, you know, and, and Brian Cox and Mitch Yoka, I go, well, he absolutely does. I go, there's yeah. only three media physicists in the world. Um, Neil Tyson from the U.S., Brian Cox from the U.K., and Michi Okaku from Japan. Yeah, that's it. I go. I, I go. Heaven help us if either any of those guys die, because you don't, there's no understudies for some reason. I don't know. I mean, Bill Nye is such a far cry from that. Man doesn't even have his master's. Didn't even try to get his master's degree. He's got a bachelor's in science, or I'm sorry, he has a bachelor's in um, mechanical. And he's he's an actor. And I have talked to producers. Sorry, and I will cue this thing up for you. Um, I'll, I'll send you the link in a second. Um, where I've talked to producers and I've asked them, I go, why do you keep putting Bill Nye on television? Why? Why do you do this? And they go, because he looks the part. He, he's thin. He's angular. He wears a he wears it's a so frustrating coat, though. A bow tie. Mark, it really is. It's like, well, yeah, but you can't just put him on and just have him talk about anything. It's like, oh yes, we can. It's like because you do. You put him on there, and people don't know. It's like, well, he was part of a children's science show. He's obviously qualified. It's like, Bill, what's your opinion on climate change or quantum physics or the Mars rover or anything? It's like, what? He just, you know, and he has Bill, a couple. Of Bill cards. Nye stood there and told everybody, "We live in an enclosed system." Well, if it's an enclosed system, the the only way it can be like that that's going into the, the what you were talking about pressure, about you know about the the um, uh, the atmosphere. And the, the lack of a membrane holding the pressures in, in this thing. Well, so he, he's even, I think he has even said about the world, the earth being flat as well. Um, he's, like you say, he's an actor. And so is Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yeah. They're actors. Michi, whatever his bloody name is. I can't Michio. Michio, Michio Kaku. 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 Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we all know what caca is in Spanish. Not that. No. So, but he, um, but yeah, Neil Neil is more of a, a stage performer than he is anything. And I'm not trying to criticize him. And look, he's he does great on stage. He's got fantastic stage performance. He is a cross. I'm not being racist when I say this. He's a cross between Bill Cosby and Sinbad, if you ever knew who that guy was, a comedian over here in the States. And he has wonderful stage delivery, but that's all he does. He doesn't do anything else but that. He will not debate anybody. He he goes out and he does his little song and dances like science is amazing. Here's why. Let the, let the roll you know roll credits and he's off the stage. But uh, but yeah, I yeah, mean I don't, think, and, I don't think he's published. Anything. And his sort of answers and his sort of his his sort of um, responses to things are like that's science, bitch. Yeah. You know, <laughs> <it's> like, uh, <laughs> but, and, but, and it also, what does that mean? When they brought him on Comedy Central to do a seven-minute rant against Flat Earth, that's oh. when I knew we were hitting, you know, when the bomber was across the target because you don't bring him out there like that to do a – and he does not do stand-up. So he's, you know, he's reading off his – he's reading off his, his cue cards and, and he used no graphics and, and at the end he walks off of going, wow, he could have done a lot better. So somebody rushed him on there to, to do this. The the other way you know that we're over the target, Mark, is like 
you know that we one of the things four four or five six years ago everything if you put flat earth in the title it it just got put right down in the algorithm it, right. nothing really got deleted no nothing was ever deleted you never got strikes for putting up flat earth videos oh yeah it's still right? don't yeah uh, yeah and you still don't but so so what we did we we devised this in these hashtags we said right we'll say hashtag globe denier hashtag zero curvature hashtag right. you know and and that worked an absolute charm and i'll tell you what there was a time when when you put those hashtags in and the first 200 videos that would come up were from us yeah and um now you put those hashtags in they've deleted the videos they've deleted my flat earth proof videos off my yeah. channel they've just deleted them they haven't said anything they've just gone in snuck sneakily gone in there and deleted all of my flat earth <laughs> that's what it feels they've, like with me as well it's like they've, sna they've snuck they, in the they've back changed, and they just kind of go they've changed there. details they've deleted great big sections of videos that had proof in like oh, yeah. my, my proof of two moons they deleted 15 minutes and they and the way they've edited it it looks like i've you know it's look like looks like the video that i made except it's missing a whole 15 minute section in the middle that actually provides the proof yeah the the um the 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 big eclipse in 2016 17 um that's going to be the the cross is going to be made in 2024 isn't it on the yeah. 33rd parallel that eclipse that happened i'm filming on the beach here in tenerife at yes. exactly the same time as there was a full eclipse in america it was the full eclipse i'm here in tenerife filming the sun moon's nowhere in sight nowhere in sight so full moon full sun no eclipse no partial eclipse i'm like so how is it a full eclipse in america and that you can't even see the moon here they go and change the the upload date of that video to the 17th of december so now i just look like an idiot stood there on a day that wasn't the eclipse saying well it's an eclipse in america why isn't it eclipse here if you look at the upload date it's like well because that's not the date of the eclipse except right. i uploaded it on the day of the eclipse ah uh -huh. gotcha You're so they, 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 they've made me look like an idiot where it was <laughs> proving outright that that eclipse was only happening in america it wasn't happening anywhere else People you only have it on your phone where it's it says the time and date and stuff. People, yeah, people forget the power of editing. I have been asked many, many times about uh, you know Jaron's experiment at the end of Behind the Curve and and Bob from Globuster stuff, and I keep reminding people, I was like, look, they shot with us for seven months, and when you have that much footage, you can edit it in any direction you feel like. Yep. And when they got to the end, and I'm not shy about it because the director has never contradicted me ever. It's like, look, they hated us by the end. Absolutely hated us. In fact, the, the girl here in, in this book, she doesn't love us. That's for sure. I'm, I'm still kind of thumbing through it. They don't even, she doesn't even bring us up at all until after, like chapter five. But the, uh, but the power of editing is, is, is incredible. Yeah, you can, you can edit. In fact, thank, thank you to everyone that's ever watched my channel that lets me know when a video has been taken down or there's no sound like all of a sudden a video from three years ago hey there's no sound anymore on this on this video or something's been removed uh and they, they do it they cre like rich said they creep in they just yeah. do it in the back door they don't yeah. even give you a proper notification that they've done it they just sneak in do it shadily and then yeah. creep back out again At to your point, Roxanne, you know, at least they told us last year when they were going to remove the thumbs down, right? You know, the, you can't thumbs down anymore in, in YouTube. They, they haven't done that, though. Have you, have you seen well, that? It, I've looked it, and there's still, you, you can, can still thumb it. down. You can hit it, but you can't see it. Oh, that's, right. Yeah, that's yeah. The difference. Yeah. So you can thumbs down all you want, but if you can't see it, you know, people look and it's like they're only leaving the thumbs up. It's like, oh, look, yeah. there's. There's there's a thousand thumbs up, yeah, but it's a three million hit video. <laughs> it's like there should be because they they were they noticed that the trolls could influence people so badly by just just hammering the thumbs down, whether it was legit or not. But when they took out the scoreboard back in 2018, you know, when the search results equals a number, when they pulled that out, they didn't tell anybody. And again, people think I'm delusional for saying it had something to do with flat Earth. It's like no, 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 no. We were watching the, those numbers very, very closely. And then all of a sudden, one morning, when we had passed um, President Trump, they, you know, somebody calls me up and says, yeah, the scoreboard's gone. 
I go, what do you mean gone? And it's like search results isn't there anymore. I go for us, they go for everything, for all topics. It's like, so so you're welcome, all other topics except for Flat Earth. <laughs> we did that. It was us. Anyway. Roxanne, you're muted. Sorry, I just realized I'm still on mute there. Sorry, oh, that's a rookie things. mistake. You hate to see that. Oh, so sorry. Luckily, we're not live, isn't it? Minute. Luckily, sorry. we're not live. Lucky, <laughs> lucky. I've got a clip that I want to share, if it's okay with you all. I'm going to share the screen. And, oh, is this um, the Neil Tyson one? Clip. Yes, it is. Just for the viewers watching, just so I can... Oh, it's totally worth it. And by the way, I recommend mm. this clip to anyone, anyone that comes at you and says, I saw the curve in a balloon, in an airplane, from the beach, whatever. <laughs> You play them this clip, and then you come back and you say, okay, now what? That shit is flat. That's go. what he says, isn't it? That That's shit what is they flat. That's yeah. as well in a balloon, yeah. isn't it? They all yeah. have satellites on balloons and yeah. that, aren't they? Yeah, so true. <laughs> right, yeah. we'll go over to the clip now. There we go. Every hour of every day, I have people posting a very specific comment on my videos. It's that the earth cannot be flat because they have seen the curve for themselves. They've seen it from airplanes. They've seen it from mountaintops. They've even seen it from the beach. This video is a simple reminder of exactly why all you people are wrong. You are about to see a clip of Neil deGrasse Tyson on stage explaining to an audience of how he thinks the Red Bull jump by Felix Baumgartner was dishonest from a science standpoint. You see, Red Bull had him go up in a balloon to 130,000 feet, and the pictures they released to the media were, well, inconsistent. They used a wide-angle lens, which created a curve so exaggerated that the whole world would have been only 100 miles wide. Neil then goes on to say that from 130,000 feet, you cannot ever see the curvature. A commercial plane caps out below 50,000 feet, and even spy planes cap out at less than 100,000, both beneath the Red Bull jump. Neil Tyson is the high priest of science and is in fact the most popular scientist in the world. If you are in the Flat Earth community and ever get this statement or question, please feel free to forward this clip and enjoy the backpedaling that follows. Where the International Space Station is, Hubble, etc. Where? Oh, okay. So if the Earth were actually this uh, this size, uh, the International Space Station would be orbiting about a half an inch above the surface. And that dude who jumped out of a perfectly good balloon, um, <laughs> what's his name? Felix, Felix Bumgardner. Uh, he would have been about two millimeters above the surface of this globe. That's his edge of space jump. <laughs> now, so, you know, I, I don't, it's, he wants to, I don't have a problem if he does it, but the, the honesty of it would greatly diminish what I think people thought he was actually doing. And not only that, they made sure to photograph him standing there with a really wide angle lens, which curves horizontal lines. Right. So in the photo, you see this curvature of Earth's surface, and he said, wow, he's in space, look at that. No, he's not. At that height, you don't see, you don't see the curvature of the Earth if you are two millimeters above this beach ball. <laughs> it is, he just don't. <laughs> that stuff is flat. Now, tell me again how you saw the curve for yourself. Yeah. And what I, what I try to remind people and I, and I, I try, you know, me, I, I, I go out of my way not to be insulting, but I, I use the very Orwellian five lights, four lights thing, which is, it's not that you saw the curvature you wanted 
to see the curvature. You've been conditioned to see the curvature. So, which is why I put the challenge out there. I go, I go, if you think, if you look out your side of your airplane and you, it's like, oh yeah, see the curvature? Yeah, yeah, I see it. Uh-huh, fine. Take a picture of it. Put it back on your whatever screen. Hold up some sort of straight edge to it. You know, like, like this thing right here. Hold up straight edge to it and tell me if it's still flat. If it is, great. Send me that picture. I will quit flat earth tomorrow and you'll be famous for, for getting me to just ditch flat earth. No one ever sent me anything. Not even try. Didn't even try because they realized it. They, they, they I knew some people that held a straight edge up to it. It's like, oh, wow, well, it wasn't as curved as I thought. So why'd you think it was a curve? It was burned into their heads. Plain and simple. A lot of the stuff you can't prove wrong. That's what like literally you try and even think of it being wrong and it's just it seems ridiculous some of it but neil, so neil neil tyson in that yeah. case helped us just at straight up helped us which was great i was like oh, wonderful yeah. thank you for that I you don't have to debate done. us if you keep throwing out gems like those I, I was muted i was trying to say something i was muted um oh. the, the there's a medical explanation for it as well our eyes are elliptical the the the, the lens of your eye is curved and um and so that can be that I, I i don't know how much of an explanation that is but that could be an explanation couldn't it because right. your the lens of your eye is curved as well and like you said it, you know it's an optical illusion you think you're seeing a curve but if you take a picture of it and you put a flat edge up to it you'll see yeah. it's absolutely dead straight from beginning to end yeah. there's no curve there at all yeah yeah yeah. And again, that's, I, I've been, I've been telling people for years is that's usually what brings people into flat earth. I, I had nothing to do with the clues, by the way. I not no in no part of the clues. Did you ever have me say, Oh, Hey, go out to the beach with a high def camera and just zoom into something way off in the distance. No point did I ever, there were people automatically instinctively doing that mm -hmm. on their own. It's like, well, if water lays flat and everyone lives next to water of some kind, Everyone just kept started running to the beaches with these cameras that I didn't even know existed and started didn't, weren't using their phones. They were using, you know, the Nikon series cameras and it was wonderful. Oh, the P900, man. Yeah, the, the oh. P900s and the 950s and now the 1000s. Somebody, they should have sent us free cameras before it was over. My God, we, we bought a lot of cameras. Yeah. I mean, in fact, that would have been such a great selling point for them. But nope, nope. It's so tough for us to get endorsements. So, so difficult. It is, isn't it? It is. It is. We should all be sponsored by Nikon or Canon or something, shouldn't we? Definitely. I, I, Definitely. I was so close just before, well, just before all this happened, all the weird stuff happened, I got a endorsement to do, because I didn't know it was over a thing over in the UK, Pancake Day. Pancake Sorry, Tuesday. Day. Yeah. Yeah. So February 16th. Who knew? We... You guys have that over there. And um, uh, McDonald's called me up and they said, hey, could you could you come over and do a pancake day commercial for us? And it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm there. That was after I saw you the, the last time I saw you, Roxanne. And uh, I was like, great, I've got to go back over there again. And um, just before it happened, I mean, passports are all ready, ready to go. And um, the the borders closed because of the whole you know virus of unknown origin yeah. thing. So, yeah. Go figure. But yeah, it's yeah. really, it's really tough to get in. I mean, if if anyone wanted to take it really, really seriously, we could get all sorts of fun endorsements. Uh, but it was not to be. Well, speaking of endorsements, right? Yeah. It's not really an endorsement, but what I am about to talk about, I definitely endorse. So take that as a segue right well, for right. the change of lanes that we're about to do yeah. so the one thing that you know i've always had a gripe with and the show has always had a gripe with is the fact that our children and ourselves were taught things that were not true we were all subjected to programming that backed up the claims that were taught to us as children and we know that that was grossly unfair. I think that that's a crime against um, nature, really, to lie to children and brainwash them from an extremely young age um, with where they live. Um, let's not, you know, forget about dinosaurs and stuff like that. You know? right. 
we could do a whole nother show about oh, dinosaurs, history, couldn't we? Yeah. Well, that's mental. When once you realise all the stuff that all, you know. like the bones only started turning up after they announced them, and, and no one's ever found them except for like uh, archaeologists. Stuff. There's never that's been an great. entire skeleton found, and yeah, and just entire like, no skeletons are built from like one jaw bone. <laughs> but, exactly, yeah. exactly. So. You, you kind of get to the point where you realise that every narrative that they pretty much shoved down your throat in life is, is yeah. pretty much... All the bones are locked away, they reckon, the real of ones, don't they? No are. one's ever allowed to of see Of course they are. We believe person. it. Thousands wouldn't, but we yeah. do. But in speaking about things that we endorse, um, I would like to bring in a fellow flat fellow. Do you like that? Fellow flat fellow? Yeah. Um, into the show alongside Mark Sargent because we would like to advocate for something that is going on um, for our younger generation um, and that is some children's uh, programs and I don't really want to call them programs. I would I'd love to kind of talk to them as, as kind of infomercials and info yeah. shows. Um, so I'd like to introduce that flat fellow, the amazing man that is himself, that flat fellow. Thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing there? I know your signal's not that great. Can, can you hear us okay? Yeah, can you hear me? We can indeed, my friend. Please allow me to introduce really Richie, my amazing co-host that's joining us on that screen over there from Tenerife. And my other co-host here, who is Jimmy, he's joining me here in London. Hello, hello, mate. And I know you know this guy over here with the hat on, uh, the flat earth clues behind him, that old guy Mark there. Um, and I've brought you on to talk to us about um, a piece of content that I caught a glimpse of um, on Mark's channel as well. Um, which is for the younger generation, um, which I, I'm going to show a clip um, about a minute long. But before I do, could you give us a, a quick synopsis about what this exciting project looks like to be? Yeah, I was doing the uh, Flat Earth Variety Show for about eight months, and we would do like a clip maybe for kids in about every episode. And someone said, hey, would you mind putting them all together and adding some more stuff to it, maybe about an hour long, and I'd like to show it to my kids. And I said, well, that sounds like a great idea. So I pulled them all the things that kids could enjoy, made sure there's no profanity, um, easy to explain and understand, and put them together in one hour and made sure that I got the commercial rights to the puppets so that there was no issue there and um, put it together for an hour and released it. And uh, Mark was kind enough to share it. Nice. It's absolutely brilliant. It's such a breath of fresh air to see something fresh for the younger generation. As I said, we've all been brainwashed as children and been influenced by claims that A, aren't true, B, are grossly untrue. And as I said, C, I feel that they're a crime against nature to, to, to lie to children and to brainwash them to things that aren't true. So if it's okay with you... I'm looking forward to watching this. Through yeah, that. if it's all right with you, I'm going to play um, the commercial for it, if that's all right with you. Um, yeah, so yeah, please allow me to do so. And we'll play it right now. Hola amigos, just a friendly Mexican bandit here hanging out on the beach and promoting that Flat Earth Kids show on January 22nd at 9 p.m. EST on that Flat Fellows channel. If you look behind me, you'll notice there's no curve to be seen. It's flat amigos. And you'll also notice it's not spinning either, unless you've had too much tequila. <laughs> A little truth is better than nada, but I want the whole enchilada. Adios, amigos, and see all of you January 22nd at 9 p.m. EST on that Flat Fellows channel for the Flat Earth Kids Show. I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. Congratulations. I, well I done. Think so exciting it really is there there is such a need for fresh good true information for us to show the younger generation um what do you think uh, about that yeah, you've that, got a little one haven't yeah, you I'll so he's very excited about this i'll definitely this. get them get him into that but the uh just another argument at, at least you know what i mean there's only ever one narrative and that's it and there's yeah. no 
but it can clearly be proven wrong in a lot of ways and that there's no argument against it that exactly that they even debate on or they never debate it they're whatever. not given a balanced opposing no. view and this is the issue that i've got with education and this is why for me this is so important for it to be future trending to have this alternative um alternative information um, as as I know it to be the truth. But if we're talking about a balanced opposing view, if the children are going to be taught a false claim of a spinning ball flying through space, then it should be introduced to children to have alternative information. So for me, one, I'm going to promote this till the hill. Um, mm. If I can just put over to Tenerife, um, I know that you've got nieces that are younger as well. What do you think about, about a project like this being put into the realm, Rich? Uh, there's it's um <clears throat> the, the it's, it's absolutely essential that um that children are taught are given the tools that they need to be able to 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 navigate their way through life and one of those tools is discernment is being able to discern if something is true or false if it's good or bad so the be the only way to be able to discern something is to see it from as many angles as possible and I, when i was at school when i was young at school when i was in private school um you know in the in the 80s early 80s we were taught that we were given arguments we were given situations and given two sides to a situation and being being encouraged to basically discern what was going on from those two different sides and be able to you know to be able to actually make a decision about it but that's not that's that's not even it's, it's not encouraged it's not even talked about now there there's no two sides to anything it's it's this way and that's it and if you don't agree with this, you're either insane or you're a terrorist. That's, you know, that's no way to teach anybody anything. And um, it, it's really, re I was really encouraged to see that, that you were doing that. Um, because my, our friend, Rox Nia, Esh News, who we spoke to the other day over in Israel, he's doing that himself as well. He's doing a series of children's programs that are covering i mean at the moment he's talking about uh the current well no not the current situation the previous situation the last two years narrative that's what he's been talking about but i know that that uh flat earth is something that he's covered it's something that he talks to his children about and it's something that he's definitely going to include in these um you know in, in these children's shows so I think it's brilliant, mate. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> and I, 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 I just wish that I had some um, puppets like you've got there because one of the things I love doing is voiceovers and voices, different, you know, silly voices and stuff. I'd love to do a, I'd love to do that, man. I'd absolutely love to do that. <laughs> No, it's absolutely brilliant. And that flat fellow, if you can kind of um, give us a bit of a synopsis, if you can, about the the full feature length, because I really want to kind of give a bit of a promo to kind of urge people to look at the longer feature length one. As I said, the visuals are amazing on 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 bits of this as well. And I, I really think you've done a number on this. How did you go about really putting together this bigger piece of content? So every week at work, we end up with some scrap metal at the end of the week and I take it off and get some money for it. And then I use that money on Fiverr and would hire people for $10 or these wrapping puppets here cost 35 bucks. So every week I would get buy one gig off of Fiverr. And over the course of six months, I was able to get enough children's content to make a show. So making sure that we also had the commercial rights to broadcast all this was important as well. And, um, Anybody can go on there. These guys are called Broadcast Kings. They're on Fiverr. Like I said, they're only 35 bucks. The uh, Mexican Bandit Puppet, he does about 10 different puppets. They're only like 10 bucks for one minute. Uh, the Preacher was 10 bucks for three minutes. So these are very cheap and easy for everybody to do. And uh, these guys would love it. If you want to make any content for yourself, you can hire these guys. You could write the scripts, they'll write them themselves. Absolutely amazing. As I said, for it to be future trending and for us to put alternative 
um, informative shows out there for children, then someone has, is going to have to be, you know, peddling that behind it and getting it done. And for you to give usable information like that for people to get involved and to get more things out there is amazing. This is so inspiring to me. Um, as I said, there's a real thirst for good information for the younger generation. I know myself, I've met countless people at the protests who are bringing their children along. They're homeschooling their children as well. Um, is there any plans for you to make more? Yes, I've already got four or five uh, skits made up, but I'm going to wait till I get another either a half hour, an hour and release another one. Well, my, my son would definitely like these visuals as well. He won't quite understand exactly what's going on with it all, but he, he'd definitely like these visual, visuals. Yeah, as I said, I think they're, they're really eye catching for the children. Mark, what kind of response have you had sharing it on your channel? Um, varied because as you can imagine, one of the reasons I was so happy to share this is because it's brings out a whole new group of trolls. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that. And, and again, what I mean by that is, uh, producers have said over the years, it doesn't matter whether you like a topic or you hate a topic, as long as you're engaged in the topic. And with the, the documentary, for example, the reason why they spun it against us as much as they did was, and you've heard, if you've heard any of my interviews was, uh, that when we were at the conference in 2017, there was a 12 year old kid that was asking me questions on the microphone when I was up on stage. And that's when the, the filmmakers realized that they didn't want, you know, they, they said, oh, you know, you've heard the saying, it's all fun and games until the kids are involved. And they thought we were messing with the future. And like, look, yeah. we're, not, we're not dragging kids in there. It's like they they came coming on their own, their own accord. And I was, we had such, had such a, an absence of, younger people's material like i put in the the link in chat up until um you made this you know the flat earth kids show the only thing i could recommend because i've had homeschooled kids mothers and parents ask me all the time it's like what do you have for younger people what do you have for younger people and the only thing i could recommend was uh fran anderson's thing you saw there from from 2015 flat earth for beginners hold on to your hat earth is flat which is Luckily for you know us, you know she had you know the the teacher mentality and the teacher voice, and so she went in and like she was talking to kids. But yeah, there was very little I could I could send people. So you know, if you, so so thank you, thank you so much for doing this because it's a it's a great addition to our library. No, it really is. It really is that flat fellow. What kind of reactions have you got? Um, some mixed reactions. You know, you're going to get the typical trolls that come out and say that we're all the Illuminati and chills and we're targeting kids and trying to bring them in, but mostly positive. I'd say 99% positive other than a couple of people, you know, there's always those crazy people out there, but you know, this was made for the community and their kids. And I've had so many people come to me and thank me personally for putting this together. Like you said earlier, it's all about that alternative viewpoint. And I'm lucky to live somewhere and uh, live in South Carolina where it was actually put up for vote back in 1988. If you teach the globe model in class, then you also have to teach the flat earth model. And this is far back as 1988. Wow. And this was wow. the vote in, the, um, in our state legislature. Unfortunately, it didn't pass, but it just shows you how open-minded people in this area are and how important it is to educate the next generation. Indeed, no, yes, it great. really is. Thank you so much for that. I really appreciate that. I'm going to just literally stop sharing the screen here just now. Um, as I really want to get, as I've got you on that black fellow, um, I know that you will literally put all of us to shame with regards as activism and things that you're doing. Um, can you bring us up to speed with the bits and pieces that you've been up to? Because I know your, your channel is still active. Yeah, we do activism every week at the flea market. Um, we'll get about 500 people out there a day that come by the, mm -hmm. the booth and we hand out flyers. But we got to the point where we would see the same people every week and they've seen all the flyers. So we tried to come up with new ways. So we have a wall of iPads with videos on them where they can interact. And then we do a game show where we'll give $100 to anybody that can answer three questions about the globe, which is never, you know, no one's ever claimed the money. And now we have a big wheel. We call it the, um, the wheel of truth and you spin it and whatever number you land on you get a question if you can answer it you get a bag of true smacks from suzanne uh so shout out to her for giving us 50 bags of true smacks to give away nice. and uh we'll give away money as well to people and so far one adult has gotten the question right the rest has all been children wow 
Wow. Again, I love that. The varied activism that you're doing as well is truly, truly inspiring. And again, this this project that you're doing with the children's content as well, again, is just a bit of a light at the end of the dark tunnel that we've all been going through. As I said, there's a there's not a big range of things that we can show the younger generation. And so many of us are looking for different things as people have now started to homeschool their children with what's been going on. And they are, as I said, looking for helpful, usable information that can get children interested in the alternative subjects without it being ridiculed um, and laughed out of the room, which is what's so important with regards to getting people to understand what they need to know. And Rich, once again, wanna... I'm lucky to live in the area that I live in because it started with me holding up a sign. I had a big sign that said, ask me about Flat Earth and standing by myself at the flea market. Then they told me I couldn't be out there unless I was selling something. So I put a <laughs> stack of pennies on the table and said one cents each. So then they let me stay. And then after that, Every week, someone new would show up and join me and stand with me until, I mean, I think the most we've ever had is a little over 30 people. Last weekend, we had 30. So we get large groups of people out there on the regular. And it's just so great to be a part of the Kakalaki crew now as Dr. La is coined us. And uh, just it's awesome to be out there with so many people, so many woke people. And I say the mask wearing in our area is down to about 20 percent because we've going to person to person educated the entire community where they haven't heard it yet from us you know you rarely get that person to walk by that says well you haven't told us about that they all they've all heard the message they've all talked to us so it's really about just getting out there and doing something and educating the, your community you're absolutely right again you've just proven to us all that local action will end up having a national effect rich do you want to add anything in at this point yeah, I was just going to say exactly that. It's just the, 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 it's, uh, local action will end up having a national effect if everybody locally just starts um, doing something, you know? It's... <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Absolutely right. Mark, I know that you advocate for a lot of local meetups. Um, do you see that they have, you know, done well over the years? They've done surprisingly well, even though the last two years here in the States have been, well, problematic. You know, most of our conferences have been curbed because we couldn't find venues that would let us go maskless. Uh, but now all the mandates are being rolled back. In fact, this state, I think in nine days, everything will be pulled back because it's a miracle. And what other distraction could possibly be happening that could end the pandemic? wonder what it could be as he scratches his funny Russian looking hat. Um but yeah, it's it's a little tougher for me because I'm on an island, so you know I'm not on the Canary Islands, obviously. So don't don't give me any crap. It's like let me tell you about being on an island. Yeah, I get it. Um, but I am up on an island near Canada, so it the the meetups are tough to tougher to do. But we've done some and activism activism's more problematic. But it's we haven't we haven't gone away by any stretch. Uh, I remember the, uh, the, the, the conference I went to, the Flattoberfest in 2020, w w there was this wonderful moment, it was completely impromptu, where I asked the audience, you know, the standards, like, you know, how many people are new today, right? Just, just a throwaway line. And 80% of the audience just raised their hands. It's like, and Karen's looking at me and I'm like, what? <laughs> like, Is that mm -hmm. possible? You know, we had hundreds of people in the room and most of them were brand new. And so, yeah, it's... It, we're we never went away you know we just became under the under the surface like most people the good thing was is that you want to say anything good about the last two years is it equalized pretty much everybody you know nobody was doing conferences nobody was doing this and that and uh we still i was still doing interviews which was fun i had to turn down a bunch because i didn't want to fly to los angeles but uh but yeah it's fun no i think you're absolutely right i think the great awakening has as I said, knee jerked people into getting into some kind of pursuit of truth because they've been given the time with the lockdown to start discerning fact from fiction with a lot of the subjects that they would have just blindsided um, in the past. Do you want to ask them anything? Yeah, well, uh, the one of the main things what like I thought it must have some truth to it was the UN flag as well. What do you think about that, Mark? The, that that was that was that was so easy for me to to do because yeah. I was a I was a fan for the UN flag but when I when I first looked at this back in 2014 yeah. and what caught my <laughs> eye though when it came to the UN flag was that something was missing 
you yeah. know, the Antarctica was not on the UN flag, even though it was supposedly this massive continent. And it really yeah. threw me because I asked people, like, I said, so why isn't Antarctica on there? Well, I can't fit it on there. It's not going to look right. And I was going, no, no, no. There's all sorts of different projections you could use and put Antarctica on there. But it wasn't yeah. there. It was just this big wreath, this big spiky wreath around the outside. I'm going, uh-huh, uh-huh. They, they don't want people to even talk about Antarctica. It's wonderful. Yeah. I, I, I keep a PDF of the Antarctic Treaty on my machine and send it off to anybody I can. That, yeah. uh, that Most people don't question it. I go, look, the Antar Ar Antarctic Treaty is real. But yeah, the UN flag loved it. I mean, it was one of the... It's, it, does, it takes two seconds for people to look. It's like the, Antarctic, the, the UN flag is real. The AE map is real. The flat Earth map is absolutely is identical in the in the layover, at least for a lot of people. But yet, two of those three are legit, and one is completely crazy. That one's nuts. It's like, yeah, but what about the UN flag? It's like, oh, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> and what do you think? Uh, when I'm, I'm obsessed with watching these live streams of space now, they're just like completely mad, don't they? It's absolutely crazy. You know, I don't. I don't even watch ever since the the Roadster in space thing happened. I stopped watching live streams entirely, because yeah. I remember. I remember when that was. Somebody had sent me an, an like a still shot of it, of of the Roadster in space, the Tesla Roadster in space, and I and I I, I just got up that morning. It's like I think it was Weiss that sent it to me. I was like, oh, who 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 made that? Jared make that? I go, who, who photoshopped that? And and I get this thing. It's like, no, man, that's a live stream. And I'm going, how's it so still as well? You know, like it's meant to be going so fast. How's it in all the in all the videos? It just like say, fly, it's like they were planes just like quietly flying over it. You know what I mean? Like, it's I all have, calm. I have, what, what Sorry, gets me right is that we we try and do live streams and you look at the problems that we have with <laughs> lag. Right, and, you know, oh, yeah. all of that with live streams, and yeah, and yet we can we can get a live stream from a Mars rover. Of course, yeah. we can. And yeah. then, obviously, no, the no, thing no. where they reprint all the like patterns they use on the live streams, and they keep coming up with the same pattern of the clouds, like they keep coming up with it like in, in repetitive. Some of them, like, they oh, keep, oh, it, hell, and oh, it'll hell, glitch I, as well on the live stream, and it'll like change shape and that. And, like, yeah. I I know I can't tell all my stories because there's no time. But I got to tell this one which is when I was at the Kennedy Space Center, when we were shooting down there and Patricia was next to me and we in the Kennedy Space Center, right in Texas, there was that blue marble shot from the iPhone, you know, with the with a cloning tool in the in the southern hemisphere thing that was done by um, mm -hmm. Robert Simmons. And I remember grabbing the, the, the documentary team. I go, I go, this shot right here i go i go look i go the cloning tool is being just heavily used in the southern hemisphere like the guy had to finish it on a friday so they could go to happy hour somewhere and it's like oh just clone 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 done send it in and i said i go i, I explained it to him in great detail i go look you can see it it's right here and i go and it's at nasa's you know ex exhibition because they own the rights to it you know they own the rights to that image technically even though it's completely photoshopped they would not acknowledge it. They absolutely would. They, that that scene was completely wasn't even considered for the thing. It just drove me nuts. It's like, oh, people don't get. Oh, sorry, one more, which is um, if you want to look up some fun stuff, look up not the blue marble shots. Look up the black marble shots, which is nighttime of Earth, that, which mm. was just shredded by us when they first came out, because in Western Australia, they showed all these massive lights, you know, because they, they paint in all the cities, right, with the lights, you know, even though you cannot possibly see those lights from space. They, they paint them in, and Western Australia was just covered with all these lights. And people were real quick to write back. It's like, dude, nobody lives in Western Australia. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> and, and, and they said, this, these whole sections right here, that's a national park. It's like what you you put it like the, there's this massive metropolis in the middle of this this national park in Western Australia, and they their excuse was well there there's a bunch of grass fires that summer and uh, <laughs> it was a time lapse thing. It's like you dicks, I can't believe you did that. But but again, in the United States, I can't speak for other countries, but the United States and Flatfellow knows this. We are notoriously absent when it comes to education. When we push you out of school after 12 years, it's like you can drive 
and you can write your name and stuff, but that's about it. We teach nothing about engineering or physics or biology or microbiology or chemistry or any of that crap. So again, if, if somebody with a lab coat puts it on the news, it's like, oh, that, that seems legit. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that. So before I wrap up, I'm going to get Rich to, um, I'm going to come to you last, that flat photo, because there's a couple of things that I want to ask you that I asked the guys earlier on. Um, but Rich, if you can, before I go to that flat fellow, if you can kind of summarize for the viewers watching, if they've watched us all the way through and they've heard everything that we've said, what would you urge the viewers to do after watching this? If they've taken what we've said seriously, what's the first thing that you would urge viewers to do? And then kind of just give us your final thought, if you will. Um, uh, if you haven't done already, I would go straight over to uh, Mark Sargent's channel and that Flat, Fallow, Fat, Flat Fellows channel and go and take a look at the videos that they've been posting over the last couple of years. There is an absolute wealth of information on so many different channels, but just, just and also, well, I'd say on my own, but as I said, a lot of my proofs have been taken down, deleted by YouTube. So um, that there is an absolute plethora of truth available, of information available. You can do your own research. You can make your own observations. You, you know, just get engaged. Engage yourself in the argument because you do have a dog in the race. This is, this is important. It, it might... The where we live might not be important. The only thing that's important while we live here is how you behave while you're here. But to to just to settle this argument and, and know that you were created, everything that they've told you has been a lie so far. Um, so just engage yourself in some research. Look into absolutely everything. Every single thing that they've ever taught us has been a lie. So it doesn't matter what you look at. You, you'll be able to poke holes in it and as far as this this conversation is concerned this subject it's it's important because it concerns your perception and your perception of what's happening around you your perception of what's happening in your life that's what makes your reality and um if you if you're holding a false perception of reality then you you're not going to have any control of your reality and we all want to have some control in our lives. So take some ownership and, um, and, and educate yourself, basically. Thank you for that, Rich. Thank you. And I really hope you viewers um, urge to follow out what Rich has just said. Please just take the time to look into this. Um, Mark, if I could, before I go to that flat fellow, um, what could you urge the viewers to do that have watched this so far? They've gone with us all the way and they are now genuinely thinking, what do I do now? Okay. Well, if you're bra I'll recommend uh, two things. Um, if you're brand new to this and you've never looked at Flat Earth before and you're just stumbling upon uh, Roxanne's gig here and you're thinking, oh, smokes, what have I gotten myself into? Brand new. I would go to my channel and I would go to uh, a playlist called the Flat Earth Shortlist for new people that's the that's the first thing i would do and there's a lot of things on there by people that aren't me there's uh, there's karen b there's ditrh there's rob skiba there's fran anderson there's d marble and so on and so on there's most of that list is not by me um however if you've been into it for a while and you want to know more if you want to really hit your friends with some short hard hitting videos i would go to a playlist called flat earth tests experiments and observations also, most of that stuff is not necessarily created by me, but I narrated it or I ripped it and put it on my channel. Uh, videos ranging from, I don't know, four minutes up to, I don't know, 30 maybe, but it, they're short and sweet and they, they drive home a lot of bullet points that, uh, that put the little seed in people's minds. There you go. Thank you so much for that, Mark. Yep. Um, again, I hope you viewers, I've taken something from this and follow through the advice that you've heard uh, Mark giving you there. That flat fellow, I want to know, if you will, why this subject is important. For the viewers that are watching, according to you, why is it important that they look into this? Why should they stop rolling their eyes and why should they take it seriously? 
should be very well aware of the world going on around you. And, you know, looking at this from a Christian perspective, I would say there's over 200 verses in the Bible that say that the earth is not a globe. And it tells you, and I think it's John 3, 12, it says, I have spoken to you of the earthly things and you have not understood. So how will you know when I speak to you of heavenly things? So it is very important um, now and in the afterlife coming up. I mean, I mean, if you if you call yourself a Christian and you look at the Bible, I mean, you have to open your eyes and look at it from a flatter perspective because they go hand in hand. And it is definitely important to get out and educate people on the street because I don't like being lied to. I don't think anyone likes being lied to. So if you are a truth seeker and you don't like being lied to, you need to get out there on the streets, look into this. And once you learn the truth, tell other people, wake everybody up because it is our responsibility as the ones that's woke to wake up everybody else, I believe. Thank you so much for that. I really appreciate that massively. Yeah. Um, as I said, for the people that are watching this, um, some people may have just come across this subject and they may not feel it's even important to look into. So I really do appreciate everyone's different perspective on this. Um, for yourself. Well, it's def definitely hard to prove it wrong. And like I said before, it's all fake photos and mm -hmm. f fake videos and CGI. So it's not, if, it should be the most pictured, one of the most pictured things ever. Like, of course, people should have it in their houses hanging up. And it's just crazy that it's all, there's nothing real at all. Yeah, and you're saying this, as I said, Jim's just been looking into this for the last few months, well, really, yeah, truthfully. Probably a about about year a year so. now. Yeah, yeah, about a year. So quite a lot less time than, than the rest yeah. of us on the panel today, which is why, again, I think it's very important to get Jim's perspective on this as well. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I hope you have all managed to get something from this recording today with Mark, Richie, myself, Jim and the amazing That Flat Fellow who has joined us as well. I massively appreciate you all for your time and energy into the show today. Again, That Flat Fellow, I'm absolutely honoured that you've managed to come on today. And I'm really honoured that we've been able to showcase um, the bits and pieces that you've been doing. Um, Mark, would you like to say something? Yeah? No. <laughs> no? <laughs> no, 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 you know, no, no, I do have, I have to do one, one more thing, which is, look, yeah. take everything I've said with a grain of salt, uh it's not i'm not here to convince you i'm not here to persuade you i am just here to put an idea into your head and see if it grows mm -hmm. the most important thing like like richie said is uh, look do your own research figure this out by yourself ask your own questions because most of the people in fact all 99 percent of the people that get into our group figured it out by themselves they convinced themselves they tore down the globe themselves which is why our retention rate is so high because once you do that yourself, how can you go back? It's very Matrix-like, which is, even if you could go back to the globe, how would you do it? Because you were the one that ripped it to shreds in the first place. It wasn't me. No, well put, well put. And you know what, to summarize this show for today, I'm going to play that link that you've uh, just sp played me, SpaceX is real. Um, I think okay. this is a great way to end the show. And for all of you viewers, I hope you have got something from this. Oh. And if you have any questions or queries, we will put everyone's links in the description. And I'm sure that you'll be able to get in touch with the guys below and they'll be happy to accommodate any questions you might have. It yeah? looks so real. It must be fake. Yeah, oh, you know, you can tell it's real because it looks so fake. That old mm. chestnut. Um, again, thank you so much for joining us. I'm now going to share this video um, from Mark. Um, SpaceX is real. Don't research flat Earth. Don't do it under any circumstances. It's a complete waste of time. It's just, it's all real. <laughs> right, my well, lovely. If you, if you, just know if you research flat Earth, they do. If you put that term in flat Earth, they 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 are still putting it down in the algorithms, aren't they? That is still a trigger word. Flat, oh, yeah. flat Earth. So. Yeah. You have to sort of think outside the box. Yep. Well said, Rich. All right, my lovelies, until next time, you've been watching The Wide Awake Show. Take care, everybody, and see you all soon. Peace.
Thank <laughs> you.